from a coffee trading company in 1993 to a $200 million cafe chain, our first guest of this evening has to his credit the establishment of India's most popular hangout joint, Cafe Coffee Day, or popularly known as CCD. Cafe Coffee Day, a subsidiary of Coffee Day Global Limited, has established a remarkable rapport with the youth of the country. With a network of around 1,500 outlets in India and abroad, and a workforce of more than 5,000 employees. We ourselves owe to this chain for the fulfillment of our coffee cravings during exams, don't we? So without further ado, I invite on stage Mr. Viji Sadata, founder and CMD of Cafe Coffee Day, to share his views. Dear Dean Mishra, respected professors, my colleague speakers, dear friends, First of all, I have to thank you for calling me here. Second, a lot of you give me a lot of money every day to make my living. Thank you for that. See, uh, my friend here was introducing that uh, who we are. I'll come back to that. <clears throat> so I'm supposed to talk to you about chasing the dream. Tell you honestly, when I was 18, I didn't want to be an entrepreneur. I want to be a soldier to fight for the country. I wrote my NDA exam, which I didn't pass through. That was the biggest regret I still have. At 20, when I was studying in a college in St. Aloysius in Mangalore, I was really influenced by Karl Marx. I was very, very sure that I'll be one of the Communist Party member of this decade, this century. But started realizing after uh, reading the Russian history, when people come to power, they forget the basic principle why they came to power. Karl Marx principles were fantastic. And I, I believe those days, capitalists are crooks. And still, we, I believe we are not very good people. So, but after reading the Russian history, I was not <clears throat> I thought I can be a Robin Hood, take the capital from the rich and give to the poor. Started realizing in the final year of, of your degree, there's no money to be made in this country at all. Just to tell you, I first, first started my job working for J.M. Morgan Stanley, J.M. Financial those days, as a research analyst. I used to write a diary in 83 to 84. Do you know the cap market capitalization of this country in 84? was 30,000 crore, equivalent to uh, a $10 billion. Flipkart valuation today is more than that. The market capitalization means all the listed companies in India would have been bought at 30,000 crore in 84, 85. That means there was hardly any capital in this country. That means if you had 50% of that money, $5 billion, equivalent to Volos cap market capitalization today, you would have bought all the listed companies in India. That was the kind of opportunity India was giving. See, <clears throat> I used to work as a research analyst. One good thing, it gave me exposure to 20, 30 different industry. There is no industry called technology those days in 85. There is no industry called telecom, no big retail. It, we used to analyze shipping industry, steel, cement, and no idea how the world will look in 20 years. So I went back to my hometown after working two years. I told my firm that I'll work as a trainee for two years. I'll go back to start my own business. <clears throat> I come from a coffee-growing family. My coffee, family grows coffee since 1870. We had around 300 acres of property. I was the only son to my dad. My dad told me, don't go and work anything. Because he had around 15, 20 lakh rupees income every year because he had a, his property was free. His grandfather had bought that property. At 21, I didn't want to retire in life. I want to do something my, my own. I told my dad that I want to start something on my own. And he gave me seven and a half lakh rupees. You know, South Indians, they're very, very conservative guys. And he told me, but it was good to me. And he said, by chance, you lose this money, you come back. If you succeed, all the best for you. So, you know, we are people with big ego. 
So I didn't want to lose all the capital. So I went and bought a site in Bangalore for 1985 for five lakhs. So that something goes wrong. Those days, real estate was not appreciating so fast as now. At least I thought five lakhs in five years would be seven and a half lakh rupees. So I protected my capital. So I started with two and a half lakh rupees. When I worked in JM, I didn't even trade because I was, I was a very good trader. I had a lot of inside information, but I had a principle in life. My firm has trusted me, and I have to keep that trust. So all of my friends used to say, OK, man, you're buying today Britannia. I remember I used to buy Britannia for Nestle Wadia when I used to work for JM. Tell me whom you are buying. I said, boss, if you want to beer, come with me. I'll buy a beer for you. But don't ask me for whom I'm buying. So, what I'm telling you is that some basic ethics we need to have when you want to uh, start a journey in life. <clears throat> so I came back to Bangalore. I made a lot of money, 85 to 92, in equity markets. The beauty is that there is, between the intermarket arbitration was fantastic. You won't believe today I got a trading firm. I trade in almost 11 countries in the world. We trade almost two and a half billion dollar every day, but with a margin of one cent, five paisa per tick. That is equivalent to not even 0.001% or 2% uh, uh, margins. Those days, India was so inefficient. There are not so many smart guys like you there. There is no technology. There are no cell phones. Only landlines. People who had a good connections with friends in Bombay, Delhi, Bangalore, we did a market arbitration. And you won't believe. I started a, with two and a half lakhs, I told you, in that I spent 50,000 rupees to, as a deposit to the office. Those days, getting telephone was difficult. I paid 35,000 rupees to that call system to get to the telephone. I spent another one lakh to furnish it, and I was left with hardly 50,000 rupees. But every day, markets were so inefficient. Inter-market arbitration gave me an opportunity to make one or two lakh rupees every day. I made a lot of money, <clears throat> but my core was coffee. I was thinking, why, why the coffee grows in the world? There are, I think there are more than uh, four million coffee growers in the world. Brazil, Vietnam, Colombia, and India is the fifth largest producer. India also has got 90,000 growers. All the growers own five, less than, 98% of the growers in India owns less than five hectares, which is not economically feasible. And you know, those days in India, there are some system called coffee board in 60s, 70s, 80s of socialistic India. There are no open market system. People are supposed to pull the coffee to the, uh, something called coffee board. It is a semi-government organization run by government of India. Very, see, I don't want to criticize government, but very inefficient way of doing that. They used to sell coffee against a barter of buying a tank with Russia. So that's the reason Indian growers used to get 35 cents per pound of coffee, whereas the international price was $1.20. I took a sheet in 19, uh, 1985, studied 1970 to 1985. Data said international prices was $1.20, whereas the Indian growers were getting 35 cents. I said, what a great opportunity. But I didn't, I didn't even guess when the markets will open. But I said, gamble. Whenever I made money in the equity market, I bought little bit money outside the, I put it in the coffee plantations. Remaining nationalized banks were giving money for the agriculture. I got 75% of line of credit. So I end up, by 92, 93, I end up having almost five or 6,000 acres. First property, uh, uh, I bought it at 10,000 rupees per acre. You know, somebody with equity research and equity trading, you can finance your deals much far better than other guys on the street and strip some assets and got, get back the money in two years. Like that, I had around 5,000 acres in 92. See, I've got a great respect for Dr. Manmohan Singh as an economist. 14, see, at 82, you make somebody, you call him inefficient, it is a pity. At 65, 62, he was a great man. He was a great thinker. I remember 14 of our growers, a few of my friends went to they represent, sir, 
Indian growers are getting 35 cents, and whereas the international price is $1.20 for 15 years. I had made a chat and given to the, my team. He said, why the hell you didn't come early? He didn't say, why I should liberalize? No. In 92, to talk this language, it shows that he's a very liberal man. And he said, why, what were you doing for the last 20 years if you think it was unfair? And tell you honestly, none of us lobbied till 92 that it should be opened up. And the day he opened up. So virtue of being an equity trader, trading physical commodities is nothing. So it was like a part-time job for us because being a large grower, we didn't want somebody to come and exploit us. But it is a destiny. Say to you honestly, we are all fluke entrepreneurs. In my case, I can tell you, I didn't want to be an entrepreneur. I clearly told you first. By fluke, this opportunity, because I bought property thinking that this markets will open up and suddenly I'll get all the payback of my debt in one year, in, whenever it opens up. But this fluke gave the opportunity to become a biggest India's trader. By 92 to 95, I became a big, India's biggest trader in commodity because there is a frost, uh, the prices went up by three times. It is simple. I didn't go short on the commodity. I honored all the commitment. So I became a darling of the international uh, buyers or international traders. So 94 and we were riding very high, making 15, 20 lakh crore rupees trading profit. I had put in two factories. I bought six factories. And see, there is nothing called easy money anywhere, my friends. Don't ever think if somebody tells you a story that, OK, life is very easy. No. So I bought six units, bought some Bueller German machines, improved on that. Suddenly I started realizing if it is so easy to build a largest com coffee commodity trade house in three years, that means when the Louis Dreyfus of the world, these are one of the French largest trade houses doing around $600 billion or something like that, trade houses, they'll come and throw me out in no time. I wanted to do brand the product, but no clue, other than a little bit financial knowledge, no clue how to market it or brand it. And somebody, f so what do you do? No, but suddenly one of my traders one day called me, Siddharth, will you come and meet one of our biggest buyers? I said, who is it? He said, this is a Chibo. Just to tell you, Chibo is the second largest coffee, branded coffee guys in Europe today. They're the same family which owns Nivea, because as a Nivea cream, I'm sure that a lot of you, they own Nivea, they own controlling interest in Nivea. So I didn't want to go, you know, when you work up to 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock in the evening, again, go for a dinner, which doesn't interest you. It is like a punishment. I went there and asked, sir, uh, it is a courtesy, uh, sir, uh, your family, because usually German and European families are 50, 100, 200 years, because they are not the guys like the internet age, build company in five years, sell it for one, five billion, 10 billion, no. These are the families who have built businesses for 50, uh, 100 years. So I asked him, sir, uh, have you, your family may be 100 years old in coffee? He said, no. We, my grandfather started this business in 1948, after the first world, Second World War, at a 10 by 10 store in Hamburg. I'll tell you honestly, that night I came back after the dinner, I didn't sleep. Just, it's a common sense. Today, in Lucknow or Kanpur, somebody wants to start a business in 10 by 10 store, you don't need more than a lakh. Even in Bangalore, suburb of Bangalore, 10 by 10 stars to start any retail shop, selling coffee or any of this uh, product, you don't need more than a lakh. I, I realized in 1948, these people would have put in 100 euros or 100 mark or whatever it is. It is, it is such a piddly money. See, when I met him in 94, they were doing 200,000 tons of coffee around 1,200 uh, retail brands in the world, uh, stores in Europe. Just to make the story short, today, according to me, Chibo family is worth $25 billion. What I'm telling you here, because uh, uh, Dean Mishra was telling all of you, don't chase your dream, uh, and don't chase as an entrepreneur because it is a fashion. It's true. If you want to make fast money, no, there is nothing called fast money, and because a lot of my colleagues or friends are here who are successful business people here. We are sometimes, we have worked 15, 20 years to build businesses. But fine, new breed of people are completely different. Otherwise, Sachin Bansal of Flipkart was telling me so that I had only 50,000 eight years back. Fine, it is $12 billion today. And uh, Ola found, uh, Bhavesh was telling me one day, so that 
I spent one year in Cafe Coffee Day in Bombay, worrying about the, your manager will throw me out because I had only one lakh in my bank account. So, but he has created a $5 billion company. But those are the exceptions, OK? But somebody, common people like you and me, it takes a lot of effort to build a brand. So Chiba today is worth 25 billion, I told you. Then I, uh, Rita, I was very convinced that, okay, if somebody has taken a call on Europe for the next, uh, for the uh, uh, past 50 years, and they have created this kind of wealth, I started reading about retail. Just to tell you again, make a story short. You know, McDonald's, 1952 started. The first owners had six stores, and uh, he said there's no big concept and sold it for two and a half million dollars. Today, that business is worth $100 billion. KFC, which M brand, is $35 billion. Again, 50 years old. Subway, 1964, it should be again $35 billion. I don't mention my competition, but you, all of you know, American Coffee Company started in 1971. One of, if I'm right, one of the IIT Kanpur guy, Mr. Parak Saxena, who's a dear friend of mine, gave $12 million to them in 1990. And they went public in 1993 at a $200 million valuation. And my soul, friends sold the stock at $500 million valuation. OK, he made $60 million. And can you guess how big is that today? It is $85 billion. Before coming here, I was just yesterday evening, I was just surfing my net. Which are the biggest uh, private company in India? TCS. TCS is five, five lakhs crore. All of our admire TCS. Yeah, it is the crown jewel of India. TCS is $75 billion. A <laughs> coffee company is $85 billion. What, what I'm telling you here is, sorry. <clears throat> what I got a clue from all this is that if you think long term, see, as I told you, I'm not an internet entrepreneur. I'm not so smart. I didn't go to IITs or I didn't go to Harvard or I, I didn't go to IIMs. But I am convinced now, if you've got a 20, 30 year vision. See, I completed 20 years in coffee. So now, now Chris, for example, I'm sure that, sir, you, you would have completed 15 years or something like that. So, see, today we are 1,650 stores operating, all company owned stores operating in four countries other than India. And we have got around 40,000 machines selling coffee in 14,000 corporates. My friend was telling me we employ 5,000 people. We employ 27,000 people. Small correction for them. And we believe, I honestly believe, in the next five years, I'll be operating in 20 countries in the world. And our dream is that in the next 10 to 15 years, can you have around seven to 10,000 stores? It is possible. See, as an entrepreneur, if you start chasing money, you won't make money. After some stage, I can tell you honestly, somebody like me, after 5, 10 crore rupees, money is of no use. It is only the passion which drives us. <clears throat> so I'm very sure that we'll be with God willing, OK? There is everything has got a caveat. With God willing, seven to 10,000 stores we can have. What is the beauty of this? See, I'm sure that all of you read a lot. I was reading Economist uh, one year back. They were predicting the size of the world economy, who are the leaders in the next uh, uh, 30 years of India, by 19, 2050, how the world will be. Today, China is to, uh, $12 trillion. Economist wrote China will be $105 trillion by 2050. And US is at $18 trillion. They predicted US will be around $68 trillion. But my friends, I think you are in the best part of the world at the right time. India is a $2 trillion today. And they predicted India is $60 trillion. Discounted by 30%. India will, I'll bet anything, India will, in 35 years. In 35 years, I'll bet anything, India will be minimum $40 trillion. What a great opportunity. See, today, I was just telling, I was just reading a NASCAM report. See, you just, you see CNBC, you start reading, so technology is end of the world, or whatever it is. I remember, because I put a little bit money in <laughs> investment in technology, I, one of the company, Mindtree, we are one of the major shareholders there. 
It is the sixth largest technology company. I was reading a report in 2004 which said India will be, Indian software export will be $110 billion. Nobody believed that report, McKinsey and ASCOM report. And latest report I was reading, 2025, they say India will be $400 billion in technology. Okay, it may be completely different, but what I'm telling you, you're, you're, in a, you're engineers, you've got 35 years, I don't have 35 years with me today. You're, 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 so, you're, you're in such a speed spot. I really, really envy you guys. But I can tell you, so <clears throat> if that is the case, if India will be a 40, 50 billion dollar, a trillion dollar economy, third largest in the world, these economies are not built only on technology companies, no, not only on the local GDP. See, just the other day I was walking in the Oxford Street with a friend. I said, man, count how many Japanese brands. There are 14, 15 Japanese brands. And the other day I was counting in, again in uh, Archer Road in Singapore. There are around 17 Japanese brands. Italy is such a small company, had around 10 Gucci's of the world, too, Louis Vuitton, uh, French, all this kind, 10, 12. But tell you honestly, still India has not produced one brand. I honestly feel when in next 15 to 20 years, India will have 15, 20 uh, retail brands in the high streets of the world. Our dream is out of this 15, 20, we want to be one of them. And we want to make every Indian proud of our brand one day. See, <clears throat> I think, as I told you, this is a small story on coffee day. But what is the philosophy in life? See, we want to, see, we always use coffee, for example, is grown in, under the, uh, in the forest area. In India, coffee is grown under shade. So in the shade, we are not destroying the environment. Just to tell you, this year, my, my 13,000 acres, we are planting almost 250,000 uh, shade trees. See, along with the shade trees, you can see a lot of birds, animals, and can, can we use less pesticides for the next generation, for you and your children, your, your grandchildren? We are working on that. Can we make sure that, see, because I remember I, I was born in the plantation, every holiday I used to play with the workers' kids. Poverty was very bad. But today, the workers' children are not plantations workers anymore. See, today, <laughs> you like it or not, they said, we are Assamis. Today, all our plantation has got 70% Assami workers. Tell you honestly, they are not Assami workers. They come with a forged passport from Bangladesh and working here. <laughs> I was telling somebody, OK, man, what's happening in this country? They said, don't worry. Mexico, America was built by a refugee or a immigrant Mexican. Like that, India has been uh, built by this kind of people. So we are making sure that uh, education, the children of these people who work in the plantations are taken care. Second thing, with God's grace, everything goes well. We'll create enough capital. 12 years back, we started a occasional training schools to pick up kids who have studied 10th and 12th standard to teach them English, computers, mannerism, 35% reservation to the girls in the school. We have completed almost 6,500 kids. Other day, you won't believe. If not, they would have not got a job more than three or 4,000 rupees today. Other day, I was in New York, one of my friend's restaurant. He said, man, you don't believe one, the store manager is from first batch of your school. I was so proud of it. I don't, roughly, I spend around 50,000 rupees in six months to train them. It is everything free to them. Just, just to tell you, just last uh, two months back, I started another initiative. See, why, why I'm telling you we are not doing anything great, but in Bangalore, we have been really influenced by Premji or uh, Nandan or Narayan Murthy. We got a different philosophy in life. They are like our role model. We have to think completely different, OK? And I started, a, started building a hospital, multi-speciality hospital, in, uh, uh, which, uh, uh, which is uh, for heart, kidney, trauma care, and cancer. It will be ready in the next 18 months. Our endeavor and our dream, this hospital won't have a bill counter for the next 30, 40 years. We'll create a corpus like that. Yeah. 
Why, why, why I'm telling you this today to be, become an entrepreneur? To make money, buying Mercedes or planes, uh, big houses. That, okay, that, you can achieve it. I don't think you need to work very, very hard. Okay, if you are lucky, you'll achieve that faster. But whatever the money we make, see, sometimes we are lucky. We have come to this stage in life. This money, see, I'm, I'll tell you honestly, I feel Premji is a god for me, okay? Because, you know, somebody who's writing 15, 20 billion dollar of money today for not-for-profit not cause is not something small. So, I think we are in the, their shadows and they're our role models. I'm very, very sure that whatever the wealth we create collecting money from you guys, we'll spend for the right causes. Thank you for giving me this opportunity. I'm supposed to take some questions. If there are any questions, I'll answer. Actually, I want to know any experience in your life that has changed you as a person, human being, that reflected you or changed you something, your way of thinking about the other things in life. Yeah. See, today, <coughs> in our retail business and in our coffee growing business, see, we run one logistic company doing a lot of movement for a uh, lot of companies. A uh, lot of work, working in Varisa, West Bengal, we, we do that. I come across a lot of good people. With God, without families, these boys and girls are so smart. Only thing, their parents couldn't send them to higher education. Meeting them, we feel that, what the hell is it? So, you know, if you deal with these kind of people day in and out, You'll be, you'll be a different human being in some times. See, sometimes you don't believe. You start, after talking to them, you come out to the car and start crying, tears in your eyes. Because the world is not fair to everybody here. Yeah, it is only good for 5, 10% of us. But there are 50, 60% of them who are very, very hardworking, good people, that they don't have opportunity. I'm thinking, so in that way, we, have, we all have to be thankful to the God and the Lord that he has given this opportunity to us. See, I, I, I believe entrepreneurship is like an ultra-marathon. Ultra-marathon is not one day story. You cover, uh, if I'm right, ultra-marathon is 150 kilometers in one 24 hours. So it is not a sprint where you do in 10 seconds and win the medal. I think our journey is like that. See, if I can tell you that last 25 years of my life was very smooth, it is rubbish. It was a lot of ups and downs, a lot of surprises, a lot of rewards. But it's a fun. See, you don't believe a uh, day four yesterday I was in Mumbai. One or two, three of my colleagues who started a career with me as an analyst, sitting with three, two, three billion dollars of their own money. They've got only six people working there with them. But very smart. It, I think Mumbai has got around 10, 15 of them who have created anywhere between $1 billion to $5 billion personal wealth last 20 years, only investing in other companies. Somebody was asking me, man, okay, if you had hanged out in the same crowd, I think your net worth would have been almost same without doing all this kind of thing. I said, the kind of kick out of, I get out of doing all this thing, what I'm doing, some additional zeros in my bank account won't fascinate me, okay. Ultimately, people say, money is money, man. All of this is rubbish. You know, as an entrepreneur, it gets a completely different, uh, it energizes you. See, today, if you don't believe, last seven days, I was in six cities, uh, one country abroad. 
And see, I made a commitment here to you, oh, this one. I didn't expect three months back my life will be so tight for that, but nothing doing. I landed from Calcutta yesterday morning. I went to office, finished that. I took a seven o'clock flight, landed at 12 o'clock. I went to 20 stores today in uh, Lucknow and Kanpur. I've come here, I'm taking a six o'clock flight back. You ask me, is it tiring? No, it is the fun of doing things. Because you do this, will your net worth increase? Does fascinate? No. See, you should understand, as I told you, you know, I'm telling you, if you're chasing your dream to make money alone, don't be an entrepreneur. It gives you a lot of happiness dealing with different kind of people. See, today I deal with different kind of people. See, directly and uh, indirectly, I got around 45,000 people I influence their life. I, see, for example, I, I was just telling you, one of the company where I'm in, uh, associated, does a high frequency trade. Okay. This one kid, <laughs> if I'm right, made a million dollar bonus last year. You know, if I'm not in the entrepreneurship and not associated with this kind of thing, there is no fun in, for me in the life. I think dealing with this kind of people energizes you. That, where do you get that extra energy associating with that? So, if you're chasing the money, don't be entrepreneurs. You chase the, your dream. In the process, you make money. Please use it for the right causes. That's my advice to you. Sir, um, sir, as you have said, the journey of an entrepreneur is not so easy and also not so quick. There are also some times when we lose all we have done, and uh, it seems like all our effort has gone to waste. Like these moments, I think will arise in the journey of any successful entrepreneur. But then uh, uh, I could not understand what is the one thing which uh, keeps them on their track and makes them not to lose the interest and zeal to continue their journey. Like, did you face any such situations? If so, how did you handle it and what kept you going? See, I always joke around with people. Entrepreneurship is like a walking on the tight rope, okay? You know, at a hundred uh, floor building, there are two buildings, there is a tight rope. The pity is that hundreds of us walk on it. Few who are sitting in the front will get a recognition because they cross that stage from this stage to that building. At a lot of them fail. Nobody remembers them. That's life here. Yeah. Why do you worry about it? If you fear for that, fear for failure, don't be an entrepreneur. And see, think that you start something. Some VC funds you or your parents, from friends. Something fails. What is that? It is not end of, see, when you are 22, 23, it is not the end of the life. Three years, after that you go and work five years, again come back. Don't lose your confidence in yourself. In, as an entrepreneur, I can tell you, first thing is believe in yourself than anybody else. See, then you believe that. See, all of us will have problems. See, I was just talking to somebody the other day. In Sanskrit, we say, smashana vairagyam. You know, when death happens, we said, what the hell is that? You don't, you don't need to be, uh, you don't want anything in life. Somebody dear to you, your family, a friend. But next day, you forget that. It's the same spirit and words. You ask any of them. We, when the problem comes, we said, okay, fine, why did I do it? But after this, we go back to, see, you don't believe one story. One of the biggest industrialists in this country, I was having a dinner with him in 94, 99, in a Belveda club in uh, Bangalore. He had put a big investment, 7,000 crore investment. Those days, 7,000 was a big money. And he made a 400 crore loss, okay? He told me, Siddharth, my dad told me, man, not to do this investment. See where I'm. See, as a friend, what can you do? Don't worry, man, this is a cycle. 99, I was also a bacha, <laughs> not experienced. But you have to conceal people when somebody tells you the problem. Don't worry, you'll come out of that. In 90, uh, 2004, we had a dinner in Mumbai. He took me out of me and Nanda Nilkani and him and Anand Mahindra Bhavik. He took me outside. Man, remember I told you I was 400. This year, man, I'll do 4,000 crore profit. And last month, I had again a lunch with him in Mumbai. And he told me, Bhagai, you know, this year I'll make 25,000 crore EBITDA. I said, yes, man, I remember 400 crore loss to 25,000 crore EBITDA. So this is a part of entrepreneur life. See, just to tell you, because a lot of you are I'm overshooting the time, is it okay? See, just to tell you, I had a dinner eight years back or nine years back with one 
VC, Sequoia Capital, uh, one of the senior partner, Mike Morris. He's not well now. He's not so active. He told me, don't worry about competition when you're an entrepreneur. I said, what are you talking, sir? He said, Siddharth, in 92, five entrepreneurs came to me and asked five million dollars. See, why I'm telling you this story to tell all of you this is how the world works, not what the way we, we think. And everybody said, please don't give money to them because IBM will eat them away. It is in technology space. He gave five million, million dollars and it became Cisco. 99, again three people asked, came and asked money from the same guy. Everybody said, please don't give, Microsoft will lead them away, and it became Google. So my friend, what I'm telling you, you, see, there's a joke in our town, Bangalore, the new breed of entrepreneurs like you, you are willing to take somebody 10,000 times bigger than you and ready to fight. That is the spirit you need to have. Thank you.